Hi, I'm Gavin Carlson, and this is Out of Bounds, Daily Bruin Sports Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Out of Bounds, the official sports podcast of the Daily Bruin. As always, I'm your host, Gavin Carlson, a fourth-year sports staff writer here at the Daily Bruin, and today I'm joined by not one, but two amazing guests, as he was last episode I'm rejoined by Jack Nelson, a fellow rising fourth year and sports senior staff writer. Jack, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Gavin. College football is back. Life is good. And I'm thrilled to be back here on the pod. Heck yes. And in addition to Jack, we've got the big dog in the building. My boss, the top sports editor for the Daily Bruin Sports this year, Joseph Crosby is here. Welcome to the pod. How are you doing, buddy? Thanks, Gavin. I'm happy to be here. Happy that I could you know, make it on this episode after missing the first one. Glad to be back on Out of Bounds for the first time in like six months. Heck yes, we are very excited. This is probably going to be around our normal lineup for most of the football season, so we're really excited to be bringing you episodes all football season long. Um, I talked about it on the last episode, but make sure you te- check out the Daily Bruin YouTube channel um, because not only are we posting the audio podcasts on our usual podcasting platforms, we are going to be posting basically all of our episodes on the YouTube channel, so make sure you check out, check out Daily Bruin on YouTube, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's jump right into it. It's UCLA football season. It's finally here. We are recording exactly one week before UCLA's season opener at the Rose Bowl against Coastal Carolina. And yes, because it is one week before the game, we still don't know who the quarterback is. Chip Kelly really, you know, taking his time. Hopefully he doesn't wait till two days before the game like he did back in 2018. We'll get to that. But uh, we'll talk real quick, real quick. We'll talk about the quarterbacks. Who do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be Dante or is it going to be Ethan Garbers or is someone going to pull out Colin Schley out of nowhere? Jack? Ah, oh, man. I've been going over this in my head for a while now, but I think it's going to be Dante more. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of talk about Ethan Garbers getting a lot of reps with um, the first stringers and seeing a lot of good reps in practice. But I think Dante with there's just so much hype around him. I think he's who, obviously, the UCLA fan base wants to see at this point. I think it would really help UCLA and their offense if he's the first one out there for week one. You agree? Or? I'll take I'll take the opposite viewpoint. I think it's going to be Ethan Garbers. I think that his experience with Chip Kelly's system has, you know, is going to propel him into that starting nod for at least week one. Is he going to be the week twelve starter too? I don't know, but I think he'll be I think he'll be under center the first snap at Coastal versus Coastal Carolina. Yeah, I'm I've been on the fence. I think when we recorded the first episode, I said it was going to be Dante. I've switched as well. I think it's going to be Ethan Garbers. Um, like Jack was saying, I just think Chip's probably going to play it safe. Nobody wants to overlook Coastal Carolina. I think be, it's someone called it the typical UCLA scheduling game where it's not a big name. So if they were to lose this game, it would be a disaster. But in reality, like this is not like an awful team in Coastal Carolina. So you have to treat them with respect. And if Dante's not ready, you can't throw him out there and, and risk losing a game against a team that you should beat. So I'm starting to lean Ethan Garbers as well. I think he's just obviously got uh, you know a better better chemistry with the returning receivers and equal chemistry with the transfers as Dante would have, plus all the experience. He looked good in that bowl game once DTR got knocked out last year. So I'm going to lean Ethan Garbers as well. But – um, I don't really know if that affects who's going to win the game. Um, we'll get to our predictions later in the episode, but we'll start with Joseph. Just when you were, you know, previewing this game, doing your research, preparing for this episode, uh, what did you see about Coastal Carolina that stuck out to you? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that jumped out at me right away was the brand new coaching staff. Coastal Carolina's got a new head coach in Tim Beck. They've got a new defensive coordinator in Craig Nybar, and they've got a new offensive coordinator in Travis Trickett. And I think that. You know, a lot of times we talk about teams having new players and returning coaching staffs and what can they do with that. But, you know, it's kind of the opposite here. It's a lot of returning players that have already been playing well together for a lot of years. And how is a new coaching staff going to adapt to those guys? And so I think that was the biggest thing that I was looking at is, you know, how is Tim Beck going to treat his team? How is, you know, Travis Trickett going to make a make a new offensive game plan around Grayson McCall and all these talented players that were you know putting up big numbers last year? And how is Craig Nygaard going to maybe change the Coastal Carolina defense to be something better than it was last season? So it's just looking at what are they going to do with, you know, a lot of returning experienced players, but they have may not have that kind of experience themselves. Yeah, I think Chip was talking about it in one of the after one of the practices about, you know, you, you have all off season technically to prepare for Coastal Carolina. It's not like in week two where you've only got, you know, six days really to prepare. Theoretically, you could say you've had the whole off season to prepare for this game. So 
regardless of if there are changes to the coaching staff, I think UCLA is going to have done their due diligence on Coastal Carolina. Obviously, we know a lot about the quarterback. I think Jack's going to get into Grayson McCall in a bit. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, UCLA, a new coaching staff themselves, is Danton Lynn coming in for the defensive coordinator spot. So, it, you know, week one is all about learning about not only the players. I think everyone gets so excited in the offseason about new transfers, new freshmen. But, you know, college football, college football is all about coaching. And so I think it'll be interesting to see the new coaching staffs on both sides. But we'll transition now to Jack. You know, same thing when you're previewing this game. What stuck out to you? Yeah, I mean, I kind of joked about this last week, but Grayson McCall, the way I see it, he's kind of like the DTR of Coastal Carolina. He's a bit of a dual threat. He's been there for a long time. He's very well established in the offense. Uh, and I said he was the less talented version. I'm going to expand on that. I'm going to say he's the less talented but more accurate version of DTR. Uh, it's kind of impressive when you look at just his stat lines over the past three seasons. He's been the regular starter there. He's maybe the most consistent passer in all of college football, which is pretty wild to see. He's had at least like 24 touchdowns a season, no more than three interceptions per season for all three of his seasons. And he's uh, averaging around like a 70% completion percentage uh, for his three years. So he's just a very, very consistent quarterback who's clearly very comfortable with the offense. Uh, there's already some chemistry established with the weapons he has. He had a bunch of new weapons last season, but now they're all back. Essentially, they're returning, I think, their top four passer, top four pass catchers and the top four rushers from last season. So he's got all the same weapons. He's very comfortable, and he's just exactly who Coast Carolina wants in that position. And so it's going to be interesting to see, I think, as you pointed out, with new defensive coordinator Danton Lynn coming in, how he's going to address going against a quarterback like this, given, you know, UCLA's bad history with their secondary and the, you know, their tendency to give up these big plays and big moments all the time. And so it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, game plans for Grayson McCall. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to you know talk about next is just, it's a good, good first test, you know, all, you know, a cupcake schedule theoretically in the first three games. Not really. You've got one of the best quarterbacks, uh, returning quarterbacks in the country. That's what Chip Kelly said. He was praising him after practice. Um, and if you think about this team, not only, like you said, the passing defense has not been great, um, but especially against, you know, marquee quarterbacks, you think about Michael Penix, pretty solid game, Cam Rising, pretty solid game. I know those are two wins last year for UCLA, but it's not like we were shutting anybody down over 30 points scored in both for both of those games. Bo Nix, even better. I mean, that that's probably the most obvious example of a quarterback showing up and just ripping apart UCLA secondary. If you read our positional previews on the Daily Bruin website, you know that the secondary has a lot of new faces. Um, D-line, not so much. Linebacking core going to be great. Make sure you check out those articles. But, um, yeah, it'll be a great first test for that defense, for that secondary, especially against Grayson McCall. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, if if, if UCLA's offense can keep up. I think it's almost like it's likely going to be a high-scoring game. I think you said the over-under was 65, something like that. Um, and, you know, the first week of the season, I think offenses are always probably a little bit worse than defenses in terms of just being on, being sharp, being on point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if it is a high-scoring game and if UCLA's defense can show up. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about UCLA now. Obviously coming off the best season in the Chip Kelly era, 9-4. and four. Could have been a 10-win season, the first since 2014, if they would have won that bowl game, but we know how that ended up. Um, but yeah, obviously encouraging signs. Everyone knows the record's gotten better every season under Chip Kelly. And now the question is, can he do it again? You're, you're, you're going into you know an easy-ish schedule, and you get to start with Coastal Carolina, we could talk about our predictions. I've got Coastal Carolina winning. You know that from last episode. Jack has them winning as well. Um, but we'll start with Joseph. Not only score, but just <clears throat> what what's going to stick out in terms of why UCLA wins this game. If I assume you have them winning, I do. I do have UCLA winning. Uh, I've got. Should I, should I say my score now? Yeah. Go yeah. For it. I said. Uh, well, you guys stole my predictions that I was going for. I was looking at uh, looking at a, a different scoreline that I ended up landing on. But I'm I'm going to put it at forty two thirty one. I think that you know. Danton Lynn is going to be still kind of figuring things out on the defensive side and Coastal Carolina's defense being, you know, what it is, not all that good. We're going to see a lot of scoring going on, especially with, you know, some high-powered offenses and Grayson McCall. And, you know, it's a Chip Kelly offense. They're going to score points. Um, <clears throat> so I think the question is going to be whose defense is not going to be great, but who's going to be better than the other team. And, you know, just it, it's going to probably come down to a couple, like two, three stops throughout the game and just trying to find that, that edge, that one score, two score edge. Uh, but I don't think we're going to see, you know, a 14, you know, 20 point differential between these two teams. 
Yeah, I mean, relatively similar to us. You saw from last episode, I had a 38-28. I just wanted to get Joseph's score in there before we, you know, moved on in the episode because I was curious. I didn't want to make sure there was no surprises. We had a few last last episode, but obviously no surprises there. Um, what was your score again for this one? 34-28. 34-28. We could talk now about, for UCLA side of things, a lot of new faces, especially offensive skill positions. We know about the transfers. We know about Carson Steele. We know about Jamichael Sturdivant. We know about Kyle Ford. Uh, the tight end room overall, we don't know who's going to start there. I think that's what's really going to be fun about this game is seeing kind of where the depth chart is, who's starting. I think someone asked Chip uh, this week about, you know, how can you really tell who's who's going to start when in practice you're not really playing full speed and all that. And he said, no, 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 in practice we're playing full speed. We're just not bringing people to the ground. We know who's going to slot in where on the depth chart. Um, so I think especially offensively it'll be really interesting to see uh, the running back share, is it T.J. Harden out of the gate? Is it Carson Steele out of the gate? Um, how are they going to use Keegan Jones? Um, I'm curious. I'll just ask you a little bit. What are you looking for the most from UCLA's offense in terms of some of the new faces? We can start with Joseph. Just who who stands out to you as, as making an impact in their maybe their first game at UCLA? Yeah, I think Carson Steele is going to be the big, the big guy to watch this game. I think that uh, Zach Charbonnet is leaving a big hole, you know, ignoring the hole that Dorian Thompson Robinson leaves behind because that's well known and well covered. But Carson Steele, you know, he put up over 1,500 yards at Ball State last year. He's a very talented running back. And I think seeing how he steps into that role and what usage he gets out of the backfield, can he be, you know, a thousand yard guy like Zach Charbonnet has been the last two seasons? Can he fill that, that gap and can he, you know, fill those holes and, you know, get first downs? What about you, Jack? What do you think is the storyline for the offense, transfers, new freshmen, anything like that? Yeah, of course, the running back competition is definitely a big one. I mean, even like beyond Carson Seals, TJ Harden was kind of the natural pick to lead this backfield at the end of last season. You think about the way he performed against Cal, the way he performed against Pitt in the Sun Bowl. He really had some breakout games with Charbonnet kind of on the bench for a little bit there. And so it seemed like he was going to kind of take the reins after Charbonnet's departure. But with Carson still coming in, so much production he's had and what he's proven over at Ball State, I think yeah, it's going to be... An interesting way to see how that kind of pans out in week one. I think also from the wide receiver point of things, I mean, as you mentioned, J. Michael Sturdivant is definitely the big name of that position. Huge, huge transfer from Cal, maybe the biggest acquisition of the offseason other than Dante Moore for UCLA. Um, Also, you have, of course, Cal Ford coming from USC, another big acquisition at the position. So they're both guys who can be big red zone threats. So I'd love to see how they operate in the red zone um, and be able to create some separation and really get some big scoring plays for UCLA. And then you also have guys like Cam Brown, Hudson Habermill. Those are guys who have been re- really reliable for chunk plays in the past. They can really move the ball down the field pretty well. And it's just going to be interesting to see how UCLA kind of deploys those weapons, especially, you know, depending on who they end up playing at quarterback. Week one. Yeah, I mean, I'll add, obviously, you know, the skill positions, it's going to get all the headlines and it's it's – Huge, especially when you have an unknown at quarterback. If it's a, a, tr- a true freshman at quarterback, you know, you need support from your running backs and receivers, of course. I think the sneaky underlying story, underrated storyline, uh, is the offensive line. And I, it's not like some crazy take for me, but like we're going to learn some things about the offensive line. It's not like Coastal Carolina has some freakishly amazing defensive line, but like there's a chance that it, whether it's Garbers or Dante Moore, like, if he's under pressure the first couple of snaps, the first couple of drives, you know, we've seen UCLA start out slow in games. You know, we think about that South Alabama game in week three, you know, last season. Um, the offensive line plays a huge role, and I think that's the hardest thing to kind of have gel in the offseason. You know, obviously the physicality is down in practice, like I was saying, but also just there's been so much shuffling. It's hard to know what the five actually is and then also how they work together. Um, so, Don't be surprised if the first couple of possessions, uh, UCLA maybe because of the offensive line especially, doesn't come out scoring like crazy out the gate, and it takes them a few possessions. Um, Especially if it's Dante Moore, you've got to protect a true freshman. You know, we know how amazing he is in the pocket moving around, but um, you don't want him running for his life in his first collegiate game. So I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, how the O-line stands up. Um, Now we can transition to defense a little bit. We talked a little bit about um, the changes in the secondary um, and Danton Lynn making his debut. What What's a good goal for this defense? Is it keeping uh, Coastal Carolina under 30 points, under 25 points? Or is it not about the scores, about just, you know, looking like a better, you know, an improved defense from last year? Jack, we can start with you. What do you want to see from from the new the new look defense for UCLA in the season opener? I think creating a lot of pressure on the pocket and really forcing Hall to make some quick decisions is going to be really big for them. I mean, as, of course, mentioned how consistent 
uh, Grayson McCall is, but also the fact that he's was one of the most efficient passers in all of college football last season. He was actually the third most efficient behind C.J. Stroud and Hendon Hooker. And so he's, like I said, he's just, he makes quick decisions. He has a lot of options because of the scheme they have with the spread option. And he has a lot of receivers and guys he can throw to. And so for Yusei's defense to be able to force him to really get the ball out faster and make some more maybe errant passes, I think that would be huge for them. Um, and just really kind of disrupting the flow that he gets in on offense. Because like I said, he's so comfortable there and they make a lot of big plays and they just kind of move the ball downfield very well and very efficiently. And so for Yusei to be able to disrupt that flow is going to be, I think, the key to defense. Yeah. Um, I mean, Joseph, what about you? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I don't want to put a number on it. I think that uh, I think that for these first couple of weeks, a win is going to be a win and you'll take that. But I think the biggest question is going to be, you know, Lynn has a background as a defensive backs and safeties coach in the NFL. That's a lot of experience that he's bringing. What can he do to elevate this secondary when it's struggled so mightily these last few years? And how can he adjust to, you know, losing his two starting safeties, but you're returning a lot of cornerbacks. So what can he do to this secondary to elevate it? And then just try and, you know, contain Grayson McCall and the op- and the Coastal Carolina offense because they're going to pass. They're going to get, you know, 200, 250 yards probably pretty easily. But can you contain them enough? to let, give your offense a chance to win the game? And can he make an immediate impact on the, how the secondary plays? Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting. I think it's kind of the perfect opponent. Other than, like I said, the name aspect, and you'd rather it be some – like Utah gets to play Florida, and it's like, oh, they're playing Florida. But, like, Florida's not really not that amazing. So it's like if they lose, people will be like, oh, they lost to Florida. But if they win, it's like, oh, they beat Florida. You know, Coastal Carolina is not like that. If you lose, it's like, oh, you know, burn the house down. Chip Kelly fired after week one. Um, so, it, you know – in the name aspect, maybe it's not the best, but I think in terms of the actual you know setup of Coastal Carolina, I think it'll be a good test for especially the defense. Um, I have a little surprise segment to end the episode. It's nothing crazy. I'm not asking you to name the best UCLA player in 1980 or something. <laughs> it's literally just it's still about the game. I just need your player of the game on offense and defense. Um, I think in future episodes will be a little more interesting because it'll probably be from both teams. Um, unless you're saying Grayson McCall, I assume it's going to be two Bruins. Um, do any of you want to jump in or do you want me to do mine first while you guys think of yours? Go for it. You can go first. <laughs> okay. So on offense, I'm going to take TJ Harden. I just, I'm going to take a returner, uh, you know, a returning player. I think that's the safe route. Um, just to make, you know, there's a lot of changes. Like we said, offensive line, who's going to be the quarterback. We don't know. I think if it's Ethan Garber's handing the ball off to TJ Harden, throwing the ball to TJ Harden, um, that's about it as much continuity as you're going to have on the offensive side from last year, especially in that bowl game. We saw how TJ Harden played the entire game and how Ethan Garbers played on that last drive. So I'm taking TJ Harden as the player of the game um, on offense. I think he's going to have a solid game. And whatever the split is with Carson Steele, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunities for both backs um, in the season opener. So that's my offensive player. What about you guys? Who do you have as your offensive player of the game for week one against Coastal Carolina? You know, all – I will go with J. Michael Sturdivant for right. UCLA for the offense, um, especially when you think about just the past defense for Coast Carolina being so so poor. And, I mean, seventh worst in the country last year. So, And there's really all the same guys there. They have a new defensive coordinator. So I think this is a game where you could really see Sturdivant's impact like from the get-go. There could be a lot of big plays, a lot of big passes, especially if it's like an experienced quarterback like Ethan Garbers. Or if, I don't know, if they want to go the Dante Moore route and then they – you know, have like a guy like that who has so much talent and, you know, so much um, skill in the pocket. I think he's just really big, big breakout game for um, J. Mike. And then I think defense, uh, Latu Latu, probably. I mean, a lot of people have been picking him as a, like me, a potential like Pac-12 defensive player of the year candidate. Uh, he obviously had a big, a kind of a big boost last season and he's got a lot of, you know, skill and experience at the linebacker position. I mean, he's a pretty good linebacking uh, group for UCLA this season, so I think he could definitely be a candidate to really have a great game here. Joseph, you can give me your offense and defense if yeah. you're ready. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go the dark horse offensive pick. I'm gonna go. I'll go Keegan Jones. I think that he's gonna he's gonna be that that Casimir Allen type guy. He's gonna be you know running routes, taking handoffs, maybe hit a jet sweep every now and then, and he's just gonna run roughshod over this this Coastal Carolina defense in every way that he can. So I think I'll take him, you know, dual threat out of the backfield, out wide. He's going to be the guy that excels on offense for the Bruins this week. I like that call. I mean, I feel like he's improved a lot. I remember um, earlier in his career, undersized, kind of didn't really know how to use him. He wasn't really a fully developed running back. Um, But, yeah, I think he's going to be a huge weapon, like you said, with not only Casimir Allen last year, but people seem to forget. I don't know why. People seem to forget about Demetri Felton and how he was – 
half running back, half receiver, really more of a receiver, then becomes a running back, punt return specialist. Now he's in the NFL um, with the kind of hybrid role because of what Chip Kelly was able to do with him. And so I totally agree. Don't be surprised if Keegan Jones does the same, not only in week one, but throughout the season. Um, what about on defense? What do you got? Defense, I'll go Darius Mouchel. I'm a big, big Darius Mouchel guy. I think he's, you know, he's got the experience. He's been such a big, a big stalwart in the linebacking core. And, you know, Latu is the the easy pick because of, you know, the sacks and the the hype. And he's so good. And I think Mouchel is really kind of an anchor for this team uh, on the defensive end. And I think that he's he's going to have a big game. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll do my defense. Um, maybe not maybe not as much player of the game because I think it's hard to be player of the game um, in the secondary because um, it's kind of like if you have a good game, no one mentions your name because it just means balls weren't past your side. But I guess I'm more so interested in what Devin Kirkwood looks like. Um, I just think there's so much untapped potential and talent there. We saw it in flashes. Obviously, everyone knows about the Washington game and the game-clinching interception. Um, but – I don't know. I, I just hope that with the new defensive coordinator, um, I won't say hope, but with the new defensive coordinator, I'm interested to see um, if he can improve and really, you know, reach some of that untapped potential with the size, with the speed, all that. <clears throat> so I'll say Devin Kirkwood, maybe not player of the game because I doubt he's going to have an interception or anything like that. But if he's, you know, playing more aggressive, if there's not this sagging off that we're so used to seeing with UCLA, especially when they have a lead, don't be giving guys 10 yards of space. You're a Power 5 school. Coastal Carolina is not. Get up in people's faces, please. Have some press coverage. Have some help over the top. Let your defensive line, which is by far the strength of your defense, just rush for it. You'll get pressure. Press up. Have two safeties over the top and let your defensive backs make plays. Hopefully Devin Kirkwood can do that. Um, so, yeah, that would be my pick on the defensive side. But, um, yeah, I guess that's it. We got our new segment there, Offensive and Defensive Player of the Game. Like I said, it'll be more interesting in the future when we're maybe saying it's Cam Rising or Bo Nix and stuff. But for now, all Bruins for week one, we have three wins. Um, like we said, it'll be interesting to see what UCLA can do in the season opener. Mid-level success with, with Chip Kelly in season openers. We'll see if they can get this season uh, kicked off the right way. But um, you guys have anything else to add before we sign off? I think, we, I think we about covered it. I think yeah. we did. We got all the bases. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that's our preview of UCLA's week one matchup against Coastal Carolina at the Rose Bowl. Uh, we'll be there, Daily Bruin, covering the game. So be on the lookout for all of our coverage throughout the week leading up to things. We're going to have previews, scouting reports, all that good stuff. And then, of course, we'll have the wrap and, and our thoughts on the game. So that's all for this episode. And make sure you stay tuned for episodes throughout this season. Daily Bruin on YouTube. Uh, all the re regular podcasting platforms. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you. Take care. Out of Bounds is brought to you by Daily Bruin, UCLA's student-run newspaper. You can listen to this episode and others on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud, and a transcript for this episode will be uploaded on dailybruin.com. Also, make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Daily Bruin, to see the video version of this podcast. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.